Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Zee. It's October 31st, 2023. Happy Halloween, everyone. First of all, if you're new, welcome aboard. Remember to go over to YouTube, click subscribe on our channel, then go down below into the description area. Make sure you're signed up for our email distribution list so that way you can be notified whenever we post these videos. Remember at the bottom of those emails, you'll also find which stocks are giving you overbought and oversold cluster signals within the S&P 500. By the way, I did just post here a moment ago on Twitter uh, a number of dividend stocks that ended with monthly clusters, of course, today being the final day of October where sometimes I distribute that information as well. In addition to that, we are heavy users of that platform, Twitter, or what they would refer to as X these days. So if you're not doing so, I would encourage you to follow me. And we really appreciate those of you that click like and repost on those market outlook related content. And then last but not least, we have a presence on Facebook. Feel free to join our group at that web address you see in the logo in front of you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into today's trade activity. And as we kick things off here, just a quick heads up. Uh, last time I did the video there on Thursday, uh, it looks like our like count only managed to get to 96 here today. So we were four people shy of getting to that magical 100 like mark uh, where I would give you a full hour's worth of a presentation. Instead, we'll keep it nice and short here as promised at only 15 minutes here today. So just a friendly reminder, if you're not uh, doing your part there, it kind of reminds me of the um, Star Starship Troopers. Some of you uh, may have heard me mention in the past I was an extra in that movie, Starship Troopers. And I remember there's this one promo part of it where they're saying, I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, all those soldiers. Well, make sure you're doing your part with supporting these presentations. Uh, and I know most of you do, uh, and I do thank most of you for doing that. But there may be a handful of you uh, that could be doing your part there as well. That's assuming you want the hour-long videos. If you like the 15-minute videos, no problem there whatsoever. It's obviously a lot easier for me to do the 15 minute one. So if that's what your desire is, uh, then keep on moving forward as is. On the other hand, if you prefer the longer ones with the trade application examples and all that good stuff, then make sure you're taking the five seconds out of your day to click like for us there on Twitter. And as you can see, you can do that directly below the video on this Twitter or X widget on our website is just one of the many ways that you can uh, do that to help support David and I. Another thing I'll mention real quick is off to the right hand side here under popular recent posts, you can see that I just got done posting something called the dividend stair step sector statistics uh, with today's date of October 31st on there. A reminder that that is available for free. Even if you're not a member of Market Scholars, you can find that under the blog area and then click on dividend growth investing right there. This will give you a sense of stocks that are trading in the blue zone of the dividend stair step charts that you guys see me oftentimes uh, refer to. Uh, in fact, I referred to it in Thursday's video when I did the sold put uh, application there on American Tower, which by the way is up since then and we are doing nicely on that trade. So hopefully that wasn't the reason you guys didn't click like for me there on Thursday because the trade so far is working out nicely. We'll see if it continues to going forward, however. All right, let's get now into some of today's analysis and let's kind of start our process like we typically do with an evaluation of the S&P 500 heat map. And you can see today was quite the pleasant day uh, in the market. Uh, we have now completed our third straight month to the downside, so it's not that it was all roses, but at least we, we, we ended on an upswing here uh, today. And many of you know that uh, today being the end of October is important from a seasonality perspective as well. According to the Stock Traders Almanac, you find that November, December, January are the best three month period during the year for the stock market you know, throughout history. Doesn't mean that it has to be this time around, it just means that if you were to calculate all the different combinations of three straight months uh, throughout history, that the three best months in a row traditionally are November, December, January. So hopefully we can get a little bit of a boost to end the year in somewhat of a better fashion than what we've been dealing with here more recently. Also keep in mind what I mentioned to you on Thursday, and I'm sure David brought up with you again in his Friday video, we did close on the S&P 500 with oversold cluster signals two days in a row, Thursday and Friday. And like I mentioned to you in Thursday's video, that was the first time in over a year. So 
finally, after all that selling, we finally got to a point where things were uh, so bleak that it can actually uh, give us some optimism that we could have some sort of a reversion to the mean. So perhaps today is kicking off that reversion to the mean for us. As you can see, the vast majority of the market did participate. There were a handful of areas that did not, and they were oftentimes associated with like earnings announcements, kind of one-off situations. You can see Caterpillar probably catches your eye right there in the middle. It was down 6% today. I think it was like the fourth or fifth worst performer in the S&P 500. Uh, they did have their earnings announcement. That stock has done pretty well over the years. And on the dividend stair step chart, it's actually still closer to the overvalued zone than the undervalued zone. So even though it dipped quite aggressively today, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, one that we are getting too excited about from a long-term perspective yet. But we'll keep our eye on it. Uh, maybe it It'll end up there uh, eventually. Another stock that was down quite a bit today, right here, Catalent, was down 13%. Uh, it's a healthcare related stock. And remember, those can have quite the dramatic swings. In fact, some of you might have just noticed here uh, my post on Twitter where I had mentioned that CRISPR Therapeutics uh, that I had mentioned in one of our trade application examples in this video here a month or two ago. Uh, today was their FDA, not decision, but their FDA um, Q&A and uh, presentations that they were made where the FDA could, could uh, ask them questions. Technically, it was Vertex Pharmaceuticals that was kind of heading up that discussion. Nonetheless, it was based upon on the drug uh, that, uh, that, that CRISPR is trying to develop to basically cure sickle cell disease. And uh, I did get a chance to listen to part of that today. It was quite fascinating to listen to the, the stories of especially the people who have been affected by sickle cell in their life and some of the, the difficulties they've had to go through and the pain they've had to go through. But um, that stock was halted all day as a result of that all day meeting. And I did just notice here um, a moment ago that it has been released from its halt in the after hour session. And now CRISPR is trading up over 10% in the after hour session. Now CRISPR is not part of the S&P 500. So we wouldn't have seen that here in the heat map anyway, but just kind of uh, uh, re reminded me of it when I saw Catalent there that yes, drug stocks can go all over the place. And there were a lot of other CRISPR related stocks that were up in some cases like 10% earlier today. So tomorrow might be another day where those types of stocks are in focus um, to see what the what the, the mood and the sentiment of the market is around that uh, before we get the actual FDA announcement here in a few months. But uh, at least for today's perspective, Perspective, it seemed to go uh, as good as could be expected in that regard. Anyway, um, speaking of healthcare companies, you did see that Amgen reported their earnings today as well. That one did not fare nearly as well. It was down about 3% when it was all said and done here today. Another healthcare company that was down uh, was Eli Lilly, down about 2%. Of course, that stock has been one of the best performing stocks in the entire market this year. So 2% off the top doesn't really um, mean a whole lot uh, when you see the dramatic percentage returns that that stock has had. Of course, that's one of the big weight loss drug uh, stories there along with Novo Nordisk. But but other than kind of those areas within healthcare, it was a pretty solid day. You can see a number of those healthcare stocks, like the, the healthcare equipment companies, especially nicely in the green, even some of your um, healthcare insurance companies like United Healthcare, and even a lot of the other drug stocks like Johnson & Johnson doing pretty well here today. Uh, let's talk about the Magnificent Seven since that has so much sway over the market. You can see it was a bit of a mixed day for the Magnificent Seven, which tells us that this was another one of those days like we talked about last week. Remember in that video on Thursday, and perhaps uh, people didn't like that. Maybe that's why the, the likes weren't coming in as much. But I, uh, instead of doing my traditional 12 grid analysis, uh, we did the ratio chart 12 grid. And I was showing you how value was starting to outperform growth. I was showing you how staples were outperforming discretionary and I was showing you how equal weight S&P 500 was starting to outperform market cap weight. Well that those themes that I shared with you in Thursday's video seem to hold true again here today because the market was up pretty nicely yet the Magnificent Seven were the ones that were actually more mixed on a percentage basis. So let's go through them. You can see here Alphabet was down today on a day when the market was up 0.63%. Uh, Alphabet was down 0. 
0.36%, so just invert those two numbers. Uh, Meta was down today as well, about a half a percent here today. NVIDIA was also down about a percent today. So there you can see we've had, you know, in that case, basically uh, three of the Magnificent Seven companies in the red here today. Um, when it was a obviously a very green day for the market, generally speaking. Of the uh, other Magnificent Seven companies, we didn't really have much in the way of big movers either to the, off, uh, to the upside to offset that. Microsoft was up just barely, 0.24%, so underperforming the market today. Apple, same thing. It was only up 0.28%, again, underperforming the market today. Uh, you also saw that Amazon was only up 0.29%, again, underperforming the market today. And then finally, at least you had one out of the Magnificent Seven that actually beat the market today, and that was Tesla. It was up 1.7% today, but part of that's probably just a dead cat bounce. Tesla has been annihilated here recently, so um, you know this is not really that big of a bounce, all things considered, when you think about how aggressively it's been sold off here in the last couple of weeks. So that's kind of a weird thing about today. We had a very nice day, uh, participation pretty much across the board, and out of our Magnificent Seven, that seemed to be propping the entire market up this whole year. Today, only one of them beat the S&P 500. Speaking of those that were beating the S&P 500, pretty much the rest of the market was managing to do that. Uh, as you can see, some nice performers there. Eaton was up 5% today. Raytheon, or the old Raytheon, the new RTX, was up 3.5%. Uh, Boeing was up 2.5%. Lockheed was up 2%. Some of the oil companies were moving. Marathon Petroleum was up about 3%. Uh, I mentioned some of those healthcare names that were making moves here earlier. Your communication stocks like Comcast, up 2%, Charter up 3%, even some of your software stocks that were not named Microsoft were up nicely here today. Now be aware that there is a company that reported um, earnings after hours. We can't spend a lot of time on that because again, this is just a short 15 minute video. So can't dive into the after hours movers like I typically would have otherwise with you. But just be aware, there's a company called Paycom. Um, that's kind of like human resources related type of a thing with you know payment software, that sort of thing. Anyway, stock is down 30% after hours here today on their earnings announcement. So that stock you can expect will put some pressure on that area of the market tomorrow, all else being equal. Let's go ahead and quickly pop on over here to the main part of the platform, get a sense of the true breadth numbers here. And you can see that 418 out of the 500 stocks in the S&P 500 were green today. That's a huge hit rate. That's 84% of the market closed in the green today, yet six out of the seven Magnificent Seven companies underperformed the market with several of those actually closing in the red. So they were part of the, you know, the 16% of companies that did not close in the green today in some cases like Alphabet and Meta. So uh, very interesting day from that perspective. Let's now take a look at our charts and see what all this means for our posture according to the market forecast technical indicator. As you can see, despite today's rallies across the board, we do remain with strongly bearish postures from an intermediate perspective. Remember, the intermediate line is the green line you see down below each of the charts. And all four of these charts show the green line is still in the lower reversal zone below 20. The moment it rises above 20, that chart background will start changing to green and we'll be going to weekly bullish posture. But at this point, uh, we're not there yet. Uh, we've got work to do. And if you look at the charts, just kind of eyeballing them, you could see, see how that would make sense. While it's exciting to have a day like today where you have 84% of the stocks closing in the green, um, you can see that this is just the second day in a row to the upside for the S&P 500 after producing those oversold cluster signals on Thursday and Friday last week. So far this week, Monday and Tuesday, we have seen that reversion to the mean kick off to the upside. But despite that two-day rally, you can clearly see that we are still in a downtrend here. So until we start spending time above that 30-day moving average, I think it 
probably makes sense to stay a bit more cautious, even though we are in a more seasonably um, bullish time of the year starting tomorrow with November 1st. And remember, the first day of the month, more often than not, uh, is a green day as well for markets. You can see the S&P 500 was up 0.65% today. Dow Jones was up 0.38% today. NASDAQ Composite was up 0.48% today. And Russell 2000 was up 0.9%. 91% today. All four of our charts still with strongly bearish postures. All four of them still trading below their falling 30-day moving averages. And just like that, my 15 minutes is up. I was joking earlier today that maybe the reason you guys didn't click like last time is you didn't want to see me dressed up since I don't do uh, the on-camera spiel when I'm doing the short 15-minute version. So you don't have to look at my Halloween costume right now. But I am going to be hitting the streets with my nine-year-old uh, here tonight, hopefully gathering up some Hershey's chocolate bars and the like. Uh, I hope all of you enjoy your evening as well, whether you're walking around with your youngsters or just uh, inviting the youngsters uh, to your porch for uh, the good festivities there. Uh, if you want me to do an hour-long video on Thursday, I have one request for you, and it only takes five seconds. Click like for me there on Twitter. As long as we're up in over 100 likes, I'd be happy to do that for you. On the other hand, if you like these 15-minute versions of the video, then just keep on not clicking like, and uh, we can certainly go that route as well. Until next time, I want to wish you all the best of success with your trades and your investments. Goodbye for now.